Hello everybody, this is Alan Underwood with CodingBlocks.net and this is going to be another one of our quick tip video series. And in this one, this is actually a tip that comes from episode 161 of the podcast when we talk about designing data intensive applications with multi-leader replication. In this particular podcast, we talked about HTTP files in IntelliJ and unfortunately, at the time, we didn't know it. This is a feature that's only available in IntelliJ Ultimate. Still an amazing thing. Basically, you can put HTTP requests in a file and run them directly without having to come up with complex curl commands and all the you know, parameters that you pass to it. Well, there happens to be a plugin for Visual Studio Code that allows you to do the same exact thing and also maybe even a little bit more advanced for free. So... With that, we're going to continue our love of Visual Studio Code. So what I'm going to do, come over here to Visual Studio Code and go to the extensions, this little block looking thing over here. And we're going to type in REST client, REST space client. And here you can see they have a few downloads, 1.7 million downloads with five stars. We're going to go ahead and install it. It happens super fast. You don't have to reload it. Everything's good. So... I'm going to leave this open because I want to show you some of the stuff as I get down through here, but I'm going to show you why you should even care about this real quick. So another tip for anybody that's, um, that's not seen this, one of the things that you'll want to do is be able to test this thing out. Well, Postman is another tool that we've recommended in the past, and it's awesome for being able to make requests and stuff. It's just not, you can't really commit that code and use it. Everybody would have to install that and everything else. So, which I guess you kind of have to with Visual Studio Code as well, but probably more developers are likely to have that. So with this, what I wanted to show though, is there is a site called postman-echo that you can use and it allows you to do get, post, puts, deletes, patches, and you can test all these things out. Now they do have a particular you know, standard that you kind of have to follow to be able to do it. So if you're going to do a get request, it's postman-echo.com slash get, and then your parameters. If you're going to do a post, then you probably guessed it. You're going to have to do postman-echo.com slash post. So it's kind of a nice way to be able to test out to see if you are sending things the way that you think you should, because when you make requests to here, the responses will typically come back and show you the request headers that were sent, the body and all that kind of stuff. So it can be very useful just for testing some stuff out. So with that, let's go back over to Visual Studio Code. I enabled this thing. So just for kicks, let's do one of the gets. So um, I'm going to do get just like with curl. You don't even have to do this here. As a matter of fact, let's just do this. Postman-echo.com slash get first name equal Alan, right? And nothing special has happened here. Now, there's a reason is because I don't have a, this is just a blank file, right? Like it has no extension. If it was a .http file, it would pick this up. Or here in this case, I'm going to do control shift P or if you're on a Mac, command shift P. And I'm going to say change language mode and I'm going to change it to HTTP. Now, because I've got this, you have this new sim request button up here. So let me collapse this over here and you can see I did this get over here and this is the response I got. So I have a 200 okay, shows me the date and time, the, t the content type that was sent, like all the stuff that you would expect to send here, right? The arguments, the headers, this is all really good stuff, right? So if you're needing to test out to make sure that you are sending the right requests, this is a great way to do it. Now, additionally, some really nice features of this are... Because I made that request over here, if you look down here at the bottom of this window, I can mouse over this and this will actually give me a lot of useful information. So if you're actually hitting a web server or an internal server that you're trying to test out, um, looking for latency and that kind of stuff, you can see here that it shows, hey, there was a socket connection, nine milliseconds, DNS um, query was 33 milliseconds, TCP, etc. right? So even your request, your first byte when you received it, how long that took, and then how long it took to download the whole thing. And then over here, they even break this down to show you how much of the response 
size-wise, we're in headers versus the body. So these are, again, just really useful things that you can get out of it. Now, some of the other cool things are you can have more than one of these things in a single file. And the way that you do that is you'd separate it by three hash marks. And then let's say I'm going to do a post. And in this case, I'm going to do... Um, I don't even know why I copied that get because it's going to be post. And then check this out. It auto finished it for me, which is really nice. Um, I'm not going to do anything with the headers, but the content would be interesting. So let's do this. Um, uh, best podcast equal coding blocks, right? So let's do this sim request and see what we get out of here. Not found. Okay. So I did something wrong. I don't know what exactly. Uh, let's try that. Okay. Yeah. It didn't like that extra stuff at the end. So now look at this, right? So I can see that it was sent application JSON. It shows the args that were passed, the data that came in, you know, all this amazing stuff here. So really good, really useful. And what I like about this and what we talked about on the podcast is this is something you can check into source control, right? So if you have HTTP requests that need to happen for some sort of API and you want to be able to test those things out, you can put this in a .http file, put it in your source control system, and, and anybody that's using uh, Visual Studio Code can take advantage of this, right? Right within the browser. You know, you might put some comments in here, you know, something like, uh, I don't know, testing out the post command. And then that way people could look at this and be like, oh, okay, this is a post. Let me, let me do that. Or, you know, if you had another comment up, up above here, then you could run that one. So it's just a really nice way to be able to do things. And, and people that work with things like Elasticsearch or things like that, you're usually using HTTP commands. And a lot of times you'll, if you don't have access to a tool, then you're doing curl and that can get really tedious so this is a beautiful way to do it in your IDE. Now, before I wrap this up, though, I wanted to share a couple of things that are really interesting about this. So let me kill this off over here. And uh, I don't know if there's a way to get down here quick. Um, so they walk you through all kinds of stuff, right? So I just showed you some basic things, but you can put in um, headers that come along, uh, your content. You can have complex content, all that they show you the request, which I already did. Um, but really what I wanted to show you is some of this. So instead of having to type all this stuff out, if you actually had some of your commands and whatnot in files, check this out. You can post the body from the content of a file. Beautiful, right? Um, that's excellent. Uh, you can also do variable substitution which that is awesome. Um, just, just some really super cool stuff here. They have features in here for doing GraphQL interactions, which again, awesome. Um, making curl requests. I haven't even looked at this. So copy request is curl. So apparently maybe you can do something like that. I don't know. Right click. Uh, yeah, check this out. Copy request is curl. So that's built in to the thing right now. That's amazing. I don't know what this generate code snippet is. Oh, I, I guess that you can. Um, oh, that's sweet. So I can say, hey, I want the C sharp on this. Uh, do you want to use the HTTP client or res, res sharp? And look at that. Boom. You've got your thing. That's amazing. I, I didn't even know that. So again, it's worth going through this thing and seeing what all features are baked in here. But I love the fact that you can put this stuff in an HTTP file, save it in your source control, and you have something that people can more or less manually go through and step through. And now that it'll even generate code for you, that's even better. So, hey, if you like this video, if you enjoyed it, please do leave a thumbs up. If you loved it, subscribe. I do plan on getting more of these quick hitter type things out there. And hopefully this will make your life as a developer or somebody that tinks around on the web or whatever in code Hopefully this will make your life a little bit easier. So with that, appreciate you watching. Again, if you haven't checked out the podcast and you're interested in this type of thing, definitely go check out codingblocks.net. Uh, we have a lot of fun. We, we try and talk about things that are interesting to developers and, and help everybody become better development people. So uh, I think that's everything. So yeah, again, thanks for staying with me and uh, be back soon with more content. Talk to you later. Bye.